things. And on the glass um, menu, there is a um, similar to Android phones, there is a menu that um, you can turn on debugging. So, oops, that was not good. on this side. So if you go to, um, sorry, if you go to settings on the left end of the timeline, and then if you go to um, device info, and if you tap once, there's a view license here, and then if you scroll, um, there's a menu that you can tap to turn on and off debugging feature, so you'll have to make sure this is turned on, which is, in, the, in this case, it's turned on, so the menu item is saying turn off debug mode. So what does that actually do? It's turning on block cat or something. So it's turning on basically a ADB uh, connection. So, so it's it's the same thing that you turn on on the Android phone when you use it for development. And so that's it. And here's an example of that. So um, again, it's in this case I'm I'm giving an application of Immersion, immersion application because it since it's simpler than um, live cards, which has to have service running on the background and updating. Um, so without any theme, and then it handles touch input since it's immersion. You can handle whatever touch input you want, and what and then you can get activated with the standard OK Glass voice command. So in this case, we can have our app sitting on the voice command, and then if you say OK Glass Hello World and this example app will be um, started, and um, this is um, the Hello Glass application, how it, it looks like. It has a small um, text up here, and this will print out the uh, um, coordinate um, where the user is touching on the um, touchpad. And one more small thing we will do is add a card to the timeline, which is just a basic static card again. So, um, it's basically an Android um, application for those who are familiar with Android programming. Those who are not familiar with Android programming, don't worry about this. We'll be going um, through step by step um, how to do this programming later um, tomorrow and Thursday. So, um, so activity, by the way, represents a, a screen on on, a, on an Android phone. So, and um, Again, um, it's using the same notion of activity here. So you create your own activity. To, uh, and when that activity is created, you set the content view, which is basically a layout of your um, user interface, which defines these kind of text labels and um, images if you have. And once you've defined your, how does your view look like, what you can do is use this um, callback, which is on generic motion event. Um, and this is a little bit different from what you do on Android device, which is and on which should be on touch event, I guess, or touch motion event on Android. But in this case, it's using on generic motion event since it's not a touch screen. And then afterwards, you get back the motion event, which is basically an event that um, happens whenever you touch the touchpad, and you can print out, or in this case, you set the text of um, the view, one of the views, on um, the um, screen you have. And for adding static cards, you can, you, again, the JDK provides um, some class classes that um, defines the um, card and timeline and so forth. So you can um, use those um, classes and set um, the layout of the um, card and push it to the timeline manager and it will be added to your timeline. So I will just run that application. Um, my glass and so I'll get my screen cost going on. So again, this is just one class um, application that has an activity and um, it's the code that you I've shown you from the slides before. So, and then if I right click, run as Android application, and it will show you the device I would like to run. And by the way, um, when you are, um, when you um, do GDK development, it's um, useful if you keep your, it's better to keep your um, glasses um, screen on 
Otherwise, um, if the screen is off, your app will launch on the glass. But once you touch your touchpad to turn the screen on, it will go back to the timeline. So, so it's um, better to keep it on, keep the screen on while you launch your application. And one trick you can do, and what we do commonly in, at the lab, is go to the settings and keep it in the Bluetooth um, settings. And in this case, the screen will stay um, on, which will drain out your battery, but it's less um, annoying. Yeah, it will be still charging. Yeah, but yeah. So I think that's because I was running this application before. So I'll start it again. If I run as Android application, okay. So that's Hello Glass application. So it's basically having a text label here, another text label here. Hearing for touch gestures, touch um, information from the touchpad, and just prints out the code in the system. So as you can see here, the Google um, Glasses touchpad goes horizontally from zero to up to, I think it's 1,600, oh, actually 1,400 maybe. And then it's actually two-dimensional. So it's also you go up to zero, down to um, 100 and I think it's almost 200. And of course, if you swipe down, um, it works as a back button. So you go back to the timeline um, where you left. So coming back. And um, the editing the. And um, what I did was I called this um, method, which adds a static card to the timeline whenever this app starts running. So if we go back to the timeline, then you'll see the static card added by um, the um, GDK application. So that's kind of an overview of um, two development methods. So in summary, um, you might end up using Mirror API if you need um, platform independence or, so to say, web-based development and you would like to use some common structure that you already have with your web service or something that you want to give some feeds to Glass users from your website. or um, And if you are happy with the built-in functionality of the Glass, like um, swiping through cards and selecting menu items, um, using standard voice recognition and sending text, um, dictated text to the server front and back for, uh, and get a reply back through standard um, card interface, then that's um, um, Mirror API you can use. And if you, and for GDK, you might want to use GDK if you want to have a real-time user interaction, like if it's a gaming application or um, if you want the app to run on the device without any um, internet connection, then that's also one good reason to do. And also if you want to access lower level hardware like um, sensors and um, um, camera and so forth, then um, GDK is um, the way to go. And in some of the cases, or even many of the cases, it will be, you'll end up using both of them and mix them together. So, so you might handle some server stuff with the Mirror API. And um, if you, and more interactive part of your application will be using GDK to either create a live card on the timeline or um, run as an immersion. So that's um, all for this session. Do you have any questions so far? And again, this is the link to the so website. There's something I might have missed then. Um, does the Mirror API have the ability to call out to other services? To other services, you mean? So call out to maybe RSS feeds or something like yes, that? Yes, so, so it's basically a web application you develop. So, so um, you can do whatever you, you can do with web programming. So you can call, you can mix with other Google APIs or other um, web services and pull information from there. And then um, what you do with the Mirror API is just, um, in the end, you pull all the information from the web and then push it to your glass. There, that's when you need the Mirror API. So uh, if you haven't got any questions, then maybe we'll have a quick 10-minute break and then come back. And the next session, I'll be 
um, going through the um, setup, um, development environment setup. So um, and so might be kind of a mixture of um, showing how to do that and those who haven't got your development environment set up, you can you can go through together. And um, those who are and those who are more interested in actually running these apps, and you already have those um, um, development environment set up. I've just uploaded these two projects on um, the um, Google Drive folder. So I've just added it now, and I I will add the slide uh, I've just shown you right now to here as well. So in day two, there will be two zip files, mirror zero, which is the um, Java sublet um, code, and GDK zero is an Android code that you can um, have a look. All right, so.